Okay, guys, let us get into this, this fun, funness that is Pythagoras. All right, I'm not going to do the first example just yet. I want to give you one just to recap, revise, make sure that we're all happy with what we actually did on Monday. So here's your right angle triangle. I don't know how great these straight lines are, but we're just going to pretend they're absolutely fine. And what you guys are going to do is you're going to solve for the unknown. I just want to get some nice numbers here so that we're not working with gross things. So I want you guys to work out X for me. So this is all that we did on Monday. So it's sort of like a little recap question. Let's have a look. Let's try and get X for me. And then we're going to move on to our questions for today. Remember answers in the chat as you find them. And remember guys, when you are doing Pythagoras, you have to give the reason Pythag. because technically it is a geometric concept. And we know that in geometry, we always give our reasons. I love that Caleb has put answers there to the answer. Guys, remember a length has, has got a unit of measurement. Even though I haven't told you whether it's centimeters or millimeters or kilometers or whatever, there is still a unit. So we do just put units with our answer to show that we know there is a unit. We just don't know what that unit is. Don't worry, remember everything is recorded. So even though you've come a bit late, you can go and get the recordings. Okay, great. Ed, would anyone like to raise their hand to explain how they did this one for us? I know I'm putting you on the spot. I know you don't like it, but I'm going to give you the chance. If not, that's okay. I will go through it. Ona Lerona, nice. Hello, ma'am. Hi, how are you? I'm good, thanks, and yourself? I'm okay, thank you. So, ma'am, what I did was I said 12 squared plus 9 squared equals 144 plus 81 equals 225, and then I square rooted it and it equal to 15. You're so speedy with the maths, amazing. Oh, sorry, okay, so, no, 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 don't you stress. Uh, I, just because I'm being really slow here. 225, we square rooted it because remember we want x, not x squared. And exactly, you got 15 units. Wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. That's it. Well done. Thank you. Okay, so guys, that is exactly how we do it. Okay, um, if I push an unmute there, you can just ignore me. Um, so guys, really importantly, remember we always identify where our hypotenuse is. It is always opposite that 90 degree angle. And so in this case, our hypotenuse was the X length. So remember Pythagoras says hypotenuse squared is equal to the sum of the square of the two other sides. We substitute in what we know and we solve. Really importantly, we don't want x squared. So we have to square root both sides of our equation in order to get rid of that x squared because we want our answer to be x or the value, not the value squared. Right, very, very nicely done. Um, Manently, you need to log out or log back in again. 
or you need to unpin and then repin my screen. Hopefully that will work. Alrighty, grade eight. So let's have a look at this first question here for tonight's um, topic. We did do one like this to end off on Monday, but sort of this is the more complex Pythagoras type questions that we deal with. Obviously we can put it in like a story sum, which I think I might have one later, but the more complex is where you have the hypotenuse and you're needing to solve for one of your other sides. But as I said to you, when we introduced Pythagoras, Pythagoras can be used to work out any of your three sides. It doesn't have to be the hypotenuse. As long as it is a side in a right angle triangle, you can use Pythagoras. Right, so I'm going to do this one with you just to remind you of how we do it. And then you can try some by yourselves. So again, first thing we always do, identify the hypotenuse. It's a side opposite your right angle. So in this case, my hypotenuse is the 30 centimeters. So I know what my hypotenuse is. So Pythagoras says, guys, um, okay. Pythagoras says to us that we take the hypotenuse squared and we make it equal to the sum of the square of the two other sides. So my two other sides would be xy squared plus the yz squared. If you wanted to, you could actually just say your hypotenuse is xz. Right, so the actual question says determine the length of xy so xy is my side length here on the left so remember nothing changes we substitute in what we know and then we solve so xz was my hypotenuse i know that value it's 30 so 30 squared is equal to xy is what i'm trying to find out so i don't know that i leave it as it is and yz we were given as 20 Four centimeters. So we've got 24 squared. 300 squared is 9, 300. 30 squared is 900. We're looking for xy squared and 24 squared is 500 and something stupid. 576. Right, so this is where things are a little bit different to your basic Pythagoras question because now we need to consider our inverse operations. So we're trying to solve for x, y squared, well, x, y, which means I need to use my inverse operations and subtract 576 on both sides in order to get the x, y squared alone on the right-hand side. So 900 minus 576 gives me 324. And again, we don't want x, y squared, we want x, y. So we need to square root both sides so that I can get rid of that squared. And once I've square, oh, English, once I have square rooted my 324, I get that x, y's length is 18 centimeters. Okay, so guys, when you're doing these types of questions, like I say, nothing changes. You're still subbing in, you're still solving. It just means that when you are given the hypotenuse, you have a situation where you have to have the added step of subtracting. If you have the hypotenuse, like what we had in the starting, okay, we got their name. So if you're looking for the hypotenuse, like what we had in the starting example, you'll end up just adding together and square rooting. When I give you the hypotenuse, there is the extra step of needing to subtract before doing the square root. But nothing changes in terms of our formula. We still use Pythagoras exactly as it is. All righty, so let's take screenshots of this. If anyone has any questions, now's the time to raise your hand and ask. Otherwise, I'm going to give you one to try. And remember guys, if you do have questions whilst you're doing the work, you're also welcome to put them in the chat. A few people were struggling with the screen not showing, remember log out and log back in, or you need to unpin and repin my screen that should hopefully sort the issue out. Nice, good eights. All right. So I want you to try question B for me. 
So you're solving for X. Think about which side lengths you have, where they will substitute into your equation or into your formula. And let's see what we get. So you're trying, you're trying B for me by yourselves. Let's see what happens. So if you're feeling stuck, start by identifying where your hypotenuse is and then substitute what you know into your Pythagoras equation or your Pythagoras formula and solve from there. Now guys, what's really important, I think I said it on Monday, but I genuinely can't remember now, is that you can get decimals as your answer. So if you end up with a decimal answer, it's not the end of the world. Pythagoras often ends up with decimal answers. So don't panic if you get a decimal, it's fine. If you do get a decimal answer, please remember to round off to two decimal places. We generally always just round off to two decimal places, like always. You only round off to something different if the question specifically tells you to round off to a whole number or to one decimal place or whatever the case is. Oh, Roha, I forgot about that as well. Guys, remember units. There are units to it just because we don't know what they are doesn't mean they aren't there. I'm going to give you another minute or two. Guys, um, please remember to be on mute. I'm not too sure why some of you are not on mute, but let's just remember that we don't just unmute ourselves. Not what happened because they shouldn't unmute themselves. <laughs> okay, one more minute. Let's get those answers in. I like what I'm seeing so far. We all seem to be on the same page, which is good. Hey, does anyone want to raise their hand to explain it for us? No pressure if you don't. Okay, let's have a scene. So guys, first thing we always do, identify our hypotenuse. So opposite my right angle is 21. So 21 is my hypotenuse. So when it comes to our formula, hypotenuse squared, so 21 squared will be equal to x squared plus 8 squared. Remember your reason, Pythag. Right, so 21 squared is 441. And 8 squared is 64. So again, what you need to remember is your inverse operations. So we're now going to subtract 64 on both sides, giving me, that doesn't seem right, 377. 
Now we don't want x squared, we want x. So we have to go and square root our answer here in order to get just x. Now guys, when we square root, we're gonna get a decimal. So I'm gonna write a few decimal places down just so that we can have a chat about what we do with that answer. So your calculator gives you 19,4164,87, and there's a whole bunch of decimals. So like I said, your the natural value we round off to is always two decimal places. What that means is we want our numbers to stop two after the comma. So we always need to check what the third decimal is. If our third decimal is five, six, seven, eight, or nine, it's going to round the second decimal up. If it is zero, one, two, three, four, it remains the same. So because this is five or more, this rounds up to 19,42 units. Most of you said 19,42, if not all of you, I do stand to be corrected. But just something to bear in mind when you are rounding off, always look at the decimal after to make sure or to determine whether or not you should round up or keep it the same. Very nicely done, grade eights. So let's take our screenshots and then you're gonna try another one. Maths is practice. So you've got to just keep practicing the stuff. Okay, right, so let's have a look at D. I want you to again try D for me. Actually, D, <laughs> C, don't know my alphabet. I'm actually gonna put C and D up there. So let's try C and D. Um, answers for X in both cases. Let's give it a go. Identify your right angle, identify your hypotenuse, and then sub into your formula and solve for your unknown. We're trying both C and D here, grade eight, so let's give it a go. Don't forget your square roots. Don't forget your units. Both of these questions have units in them. So our answers need to have those units. So C is in centimeters, D is in millimeters. Just remember when you put your answer on the chat to just number it C and D. Guys, keep those answers coming. Remember you're rounding off. So D is going to be a decimal answer. Just remember you're rounding off and what we spoke about. Something just bit me.
Okay, I'm gonna give you one more minute and then we'll have a look. Maybe two, I'm just still seeing some sweet answers come in. But let's see how we go. Okay, so guys, what you're gonna find is that Pythagoras comes up, particularly in your measurement section. So often Pythagoras is tested alongside or within sections. And so whilst we definitely can give you just a triangle by itself, often we ask you to apply it within certain topics. So it's really important that we can do Pythagoras so that we can identify when we need to use it. Alrighty. Okay, let's have a look. So I'm gonna start with question C. Again, we identify our hypotenuse. We can see that's 10 in this case. So we've got 10 squared is equal to X squared plus eight squared. Oopsie. My reason is Pythag. All right, from there on, 10 squared is 100, x squared is what we want, 8 squared is 64. Subtract 64 on both sides, so we've got 100 minus 64 equals x squared, leaving us with 36 equals x squared. We know we have to square root both sides of our equation in order to get x alone, and we also know that 36 square rooted is 6. So x in question C was six centimeters. Guys, if you wrote it as six centimeters equals X or X equals six centimeters, it makes absolutely no difference. It is exactly the same answer. So it doesn't matter if you swap the X and the six centimeters. Right, I will come back for you to take a screenshot. Let's just go through D. Again, if we identify our hypotenuse, we can see it's seven. So we've got seven squared is equal to x squared plus one squared. That gives us 49 is equal to x squared plus one. We're gonna subtract one on both sides, meaning that I end up with 48 equals x squared. And so when I square root both sides, I end up with, X is equal to, and it's a whole long gross decimal, 6,93 millimeters. Right, importantly, guys, it's 6,93 because if you look at the decimal, it's 6,928203, and then a whole long thing. If we stop after two decimal places, this eight rounds the two up to a three. So 6,93 millimeters. Right, so there are C and D. You can take screenshots if you need to. If anyone has any questions, now's the time to raise your hand and ask. Otherwise, we're gonna take a little brain break. Okay, hopefully we've all got our screenshots. I'm assuming there's no questions just because there's no hands and I didn't see anything come up on the chat. I'm just double checking though. Cool. Right, brain break. Oh, that's so scary. Okay, so we are trying the brain break here. Guys, I wish I could tell you what these things were. I just thought they were cute and we're near, nearing nah, we're nearing Halloween. I'm gonna assume this purple thing is like a little, I wanna say vampire, but I don't know why I think vampire. 
The green thing I assume is like a zombie and the eyeball thing, I don't know. But we're in the Halloween spirit, so hence why I chose this one. You know how the brain break works? I want the value of the very last expression. This bad boy down here. So let's give it a try. Oh gosh. Mm, okay. Your turtle? I don't know. Guys. Yelena and I have both decided to go back to the gym and it is whew, stiff. I agree. <laughs> I agree. It's a very painful thing. <laughs> you. Rotilla, I'm glad you enjoyed. Okay. Tito is making me panic because I'm not there yet. Tito, I refuse to believe. I feel like you're seeing a pattern to these, these things. Because how did you get that so fast? Um, Zandelia, I'm not too sure what you need a screenshot of. If, the, if it's a previous question, I did give you an opportunity to screenshot, um, but I will go back when we're done with this. All right, I'm gonna give everyone a chance to do it and then we'll see correct answers. Okay, I'll give you another minute or so and then we'll I'll let you know who the first person was to get the correct answer. Right, Teto, are you explaining it for us? You were indeed the first, well done. If you wanna raise your hand, there we go. Okay, Teto, tell us. Hello, ma'am. Hi. Um, <clears throat> this, this one is kind of quick, but Okay, ma'am, for the first one, I think it's like a ghost or something like that. Yeah, ghost actually makes uh, more sense, yeah. <laughs> the three of them added together supposed to equal 15, and there's no, how do I explain this? I divided it by three, so I got five. Yeah. Perfect. So I have five, five, five. 15, which leaves me with the ghost being five. Mm -hmm. Then I worked off with what I had already known. So I knew that there was a five. I couldn't really use inverse operations on it. Well, if I could, I didn't realize I could. But I looked at it and I decided I'm going to work on it to baby steps. So I started with the number that is getting closest to the answer, which would have been 10. Well, could have been further, but I started off with 10. So I said five times 10, and then there was the ghost on the far side that I also had to, not the ghost, the zombie, that I also mm -hmm. had to add in. And that 
happened to work out for me. So the go goes. So the zombie would have been ten. Perfect. And then I started off knowing what I already know again. This one, it wasn't a baby step kind of thing. It was just something where, yeah, I sort of started to see a pattern. Because there's usually something like this in mm -hmm. grade break every second, third week, maybe. So I just knew this one. I can't remember how I solved it the very first time. But I just knew that this flying eye thing or <laughs> eagle. I'm not sure. I just knew that. All I knew was that I knew it was nine. So I had yeah. 10 times nine plus nine, which was 99. Nice. Which left the final sum being 9 plus 20 times 5. And I got 109. Good. Okay, so guys, just remember your bod mass. Exactly as Tetel said, our final answer here, 109. I just want to go back to what Tetel said in the second step of, if I could do bod mass, I didn't know how to, so I didn't. So guys, in the second step, you knew the little purple thing, purple ghost looking thing. So if you don't know the two zombies, you could make them X. We know they're the same thing. So five times X is five X plus X would give me six X. So technically what you have is six X equals your 60. And so you could work out that X is equal to 10. And we said the zombies were, were both 10. So you can do inverse operations with that. And that would be the same thing with the eyeball flying things you could set up in a in an algebraic equation for yourself you obviously don't have to but the reason as i constantly tell you guys why these are so useful is because it is solving an equation right you don't necessarily have to look at it in terms of x's but you can if it's helpful to you but very nicely done tetel well done and a lot of you also got 109 so well done everyone who got 109 that's awesome and there's just a question for screenshots of C and D. So I'm just going to quickly go back to C and D. There we go. So if you do need to take a screenshot, please do. Get a touch bigger. That seems a bit small. Okay, so um, I think Sandelia wanted screenshots. I hope you have them. Maybe 30 seconds. Then I'm moving on. Okay. Alrighty, guys. Perfect, cool. So again, I want you to try Y for me. Oh, say try Y. Try Question A, where you are solving for Y. Let's give it a go. Let's see what we get. We're solving for Y. Remember, there are units here. They're in centimeters. Members, your units, grade nine, or grade nine to grade eight.
trying to come up with a nice, interesting question. Um, Kamva, yeah, you do have to write Pythag. You don't have to write it like for every single step, but your very first statement with the equation, you do need to write Pythag. It's a reason that we're using, so we have to make sure we put it down. Right, one more minute and then we'll have a look. Nice guys. Okay, let's have a seat. So hypotenuse 13. So hypotenuse squared 13 squared is equal to y squared plus five squared. And so as I said earlier in response to Kamba's question, you just write Pythag at your first step. You don't have to write it again. Right, so that doesn't look like 13. 13 squared is 169 is equal to y squared plus 25 because five squared is 25. We then say 169 minus 25 to get y squared, which is 144. We then have to square root both sides. And so we get that y is equal to 12 centimeters. So exactly as you guys had said here, once we'd square rooted, we got an answer of 12 centimeters. Right, let's take our screenshots. If we have any questions, raise your hand now. I'm either about to do a quick scroll to a completely separate question, not the next one. Otherwise I've got an, uh, my own question that I'm gonna ask you. Exactly, exactly, Teto. So it's like geometry, you've used some existing knowledge or some existing theorem in order to say angles in a triangle or whatever. And so because you've used someone's work, you have to credit them. It's a good way to think about it. Otherwise you're plagiarizing poor Pythagoras. Alrighty, I just want to see if I put a question there. <laughs> right, so now I've jumped. Doesn't matter, you guys are on a roll. So let's try something a bit different. A ladder is leaning against the side of a 10 meter house. If the base of the ladder is three meters away from the house, how tall is the ladder? Okay, so guys, this is a type of like complex Pythagoras question that we would ask you. And my advice is when you get something like this, draw a picture. If there is no picture there for you, draw one for yourself so that you know what you're working with. Okay, now I'm not an artist, so we're just gonna deal with it. Here's my house. And guys, remember your house to your ground is technically at a 90 degree angle. So here's my ground. It is at a right angle. What we then have is the ladder leaning against the house. Hello, okay. So this is my ladder. We know that the house is 10 meters tall and we know that the ladder ends up 
three meters away from the house. House. So I want to know how long or how tall is the ladder. The how tall is probably the wrong English words. Should probably say how long is the ladder. But as long as you understand. Right, let's give it a try. So great, it's the question might initially seem confusing because it's a whole bunch of words and we always panic when there's words and maps. But once you draw a picture for yourself and you understand what's going on, we can see that it's just a Pythagoras question. There's nothing more to it. Nice kettle. And guys, remember when in doubt, two decimal places you're rounding. Give you another two or so minutes. See what we get. Remember, put your answers in the chat so we can see them. So far, so good. And guys, remember, you can double check yourself or you can sort of make an educated guess if you're right. We can see that the ladder is definitely the hypotenuse in our diagram. So it should be the longest side. So as long as it's longer than 10 meters, even if it's just by a bit, you should be on it. Okay, so hypotenuse squared, as I've just said, that would be our ladder. So h squared, if you want to say l squared for ladder, whatever, is equal to 10 squared plus 3 squared, all because of dear old Pythagoras. Right, so h squared would be equal to 100 plus 9, which means h squared is equal to 109. We need to square root both sides because I obviously want h, not h squared. And when I square root 109, I get my 10, 44 meters. Okay, so guys, don't be scared of questions like this with words. They're not meant to be scary. Break it down. If you don't have a picture, draw a picture for yourself. It does become a lot easier. Right, let's screenshot this. I want to give you one more, slightly more complex one before we end off. Screenshots, if you do have any questions, obviously feel free to put it in the chat. Otherwise, if you want to raise your hand, now is the time to do so. Okay. okay. All right, so this is your question. Okay, let me try 
Um, Zimmy, I do see your question. I'm not sure if I understand, but it could also just be because I'm trying to read and do this. Give me two seconds, let me finish this. I'll read your question again properly. And if I'm still not understanding, I might need you to raise your hand. Okay, so guys, there is your question. I want to know the length of the highlighted roots. So I've highlighted it for you there in yellow. So I'm gonna move this down a bit so you can actually see what's going on. Right, so let's give this one a try. Okay, so me hope we're sorted, yeah. So, the hypotenuse is part of the Pythagorean theorem. We can't do Pythagoras without the hypotenuse. Okay, so guys, let's give this a try. I want the length of the highlighted roots. I'm gonna give you two, three minutes and we'll go through it. Remember, you do have units here, it's all in meters, so just bear that in mind for your answer. Okay, so remember my question is, determine the length of the highlighted root. Okay, so guys, just careful your units are in meters. You're doing really nicely, keep it up. <clears throat> Okay, let's see. So the first thing I want to do is I want to work out the length of AB. I don't know that and it's on my highlighted route, so I need to do that. So AB is our hypotenuse. So AB squared is equal to 24 squared plus 10 squared. And again, remember credit where credit's due, Pythag. All right. 
So AB squared is equal to 24 squared, which is 576, plus 10 squared, which is 100. So AB squared is equal to 676. We need to square root both of them. And so that leaves me with AB is equal to 26 meters. So now I know what this is. The next thing that I need to go and do is I need to work out the length of BD. Okay, now BD is not my hypotenuse. My hypotenuse is 20, so that's opposite my right angle. So 20 squared is equal to BD squared plus 12 squared, again, because of Pythagoras. And guys, because this is a new Pythagoras calculation, you have to give the reason again. So 200 squared plus 400 is equal to B D squared plus 144. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. We then have to obviously go and use our inverse operation. So 400 minus 144 gives us 256. So B D squared is equal to 256. Again, we don't want BD squared, we want BD to the square root. And so 256 square rooted is 16. So BD is equal to 16 meters. Now, because I asked you for the length of the root, exactly what some of you said there on the chat, what we now need to do is we now need to add these two together. So we take 26 plus 16, and that gives us our 42 meters. So just make sure you are actually answering the question that was given to you. All right, so yes, you're going to get a mark for A, B, and for B, D, and so on, but the actual question asks for the length of the root. All right, guys, I'll leave that up there, obviously, for you to take screenshots.